Welcome to the 2014 Annual Meeting of the American Academy of Neurology in Philadelphia. This is the world's largest gathering of neurologists with more than 12,000 attendees who are here to learn the latest scientific research advances in brain disease. My name is Andy Imholt. I will be moderating today's press conference and we're joined by members of the press in attendance at the annual meeting and by conference call. Today we welcome Dr. Barbara Koppel, lead author, and Dr. Gary Gronseth, one of the co-authors of the American Academy of Neurology's systematic review, Efficacy and Safety of the, of the Therapeutic Use of Medical Marijuana in Selected Neurologic Disorders. The research will be published today online in Neurology, the Medical Journal of the American Academy of Neurology, and is endorsed by the following, the American Epilepsy Society, the American Autonomic Society, and the International Rett Syndrome Foundation. After our lead author and co-author uh, pre presentation today, we will begin with questions first by those in attendance in Philadelphia and then from those journalists on the phone. Please use the microphone in the center of the room when asking questions and remember to identify yourself and your media outlet. Just a reminder that there is an embargo on this presentation of 4 p.m. Eastern Time today. A video of the press, press conference will be posted on YouTube later today. Welcome, Drs. Koppel and Gronseth. Thank you. Our purpose today is to discuss the new review by the American Academy of Neurology of available scientific research on the uses of medical marijuana in the treatment of certain brain diseases. The review finds that certain forms of medical marijuana can be helpful to treat some symptoms of multiple sclerosis, but it did not appear to be helpful in treating drug-induced movements of Parkinson's disease. There was not enough evidence found to show if medical marijuana is helpful in treating motor problems in Huntington's disease, tics and Tourette's syndrome, and reducing the number of seizures in epilepsy. This academy review highlights the need for more high-quality re research studies of the long-term efficacy and safety of the use of medical marijuana in neurologic illnesses. The review concluded that certain forms of medical marijuana specifically pill and oral spray forms, can help treat some symptoms of MS. These include spasticity, which is muscle stiffness, certain types of pain, including painful spasms, uh, pain related to spasticity, and central pain, which is usually with burning and numbness, and overactive bladder symptoms. Most of the MS studies examined pill or oral spray forms, but two studies examined smoked medical marijuana for the treatment of the same symptoms. However, these studies did not provide enough information to show if smoke mar smoking marijuana is effective. For Parkinson's disease, the Academy Review concluded that medical marijuana in the form of synthetic THC pills does not help uh, reduce the number of involuntary abnormal movements induced by levodopa that can develop in the late stages of Parkinson's um, from this medication. The Academy Review also concluded that there was not enough information to show if medical marijuana, including smoked marijuana, is safe or effective in the following neurologic diseases. The motor symptoms of Huntington's, tics and Tourette's syndrome, cervical dystonia, which is abnormal neck movements, and seizures and epilepsy. There are safety concerns with medical marijuana use. The side effects that were reported in more than, one, uh, more than two studies were nausea, fatigue, increased weakness, behavioral or mood changes, suicidal thoughts or hallucinations, dizziness, fainting symptoms, and feelings of intoxication or feeling high. There were, there were reports of two seizures. Mood changes and suicidal thoughts are of special concern when a medication is used in patients with neurologic illness such as MS or Parkinson's because they are at increased risk for depression and suicide. The studies showed the risk of serious psychological effects overall to be 1%, or one in every 100 people. In general, medical marijuana is prescribed as a treatment for use only when standard treatment was not helpful in controlling all patients' symptoms, and the standard treatment was allowed to be continued during most of these studies. Um, so it, in conclusion, it, there's a place for it, and more work is going to need to be done to figure out exactly where its indications will be. 
Go ahead. So I'd like to make two additional points. So one is that the, the only purpose that the Academy had or has when it does a review like this is to summarize the evidence to inform clinicians, patients, and researchers about what we know and what we don't know about the uh, efficacy of any interve inve intervention, in this case, medical marijuana. So that's the first point. The second point is when we say something like there's insufficient information or insufficient evidence to indicate that it's effective for a condition, that's not the same thing as saying that there's evidence that it's not effective for that condition, and that's a common uh, way that we confuse these statements. So I just wanted to emphasize that.